welcome back. Today we're going to be doing something different. We're going to be working on a drawing and it's by, it's a copy of an old master and it's one of my favorite draftsmen of all time. His name is Canaletto. We're going to be copying one of his landscape drawings using pen and ink and wash. Pen and ink and wash has been my favorite type of drawing medium ever because it's very clean and it lends it itself well to my sort of style of drawing and sculpting. So let's get started. First thing you're going to need is a paper that's big enough. Normally I don't recommend doing pen and ink drawings in something so big, but because this drawing is so intricate and so detailed in Canaletto's drawing, then I'm going to use this larger piece of paper. And I'm using a drafting table. So I will take pieces of tape. Usually you can get drafting dots as well. Those work well, especially if you're out working outside. You can just kind of put them on your sketchbook. I prefer sketchbook drawing, but this is a other great format. I'm going to be using my computer. The way I like to set it up is just to have a little notch here on my drafting table and that way it's secure. It's not like the best way, but it works really well. And I do have a light here as well in case I need it. And I prefer to work with natural light. And right now in this studio, natural light is coming in and it's pretty decent for now. So later on, I might turn on this and it uses an LED bulb. So it doesn't waste a lot of energy, but if I can help it, I'm gonna be using just um, natural light. For materials, to start out with, you're gonna need some sort of pencil. I would recommend getting an H or HB, something light, and we're gonna be just using this to indicate the gesture, the proportions of the drawing. Not to copy the drawing exactly as it is, but to get a feeling. And it's very difficult to copy a Canaletto as if you're a robot, because his drawings were very fluid. You're also going to need a kneaded eraser. It's one of these soft erasers. These are important because they do not damage your paper. And we're using pretty decent paper. Uh, you can use any paper you want. I'm using a paper that I toned with some tea. The thing you're going to need are quill pens. So here is the one I like to use. And this is the pen I'll be using. It's got this weird cross in there and it works pretty well. So it's a dipping pen. So you dip it into the ink and then normally you want to move it this way. There's a lot of technique to pen and ink. I'll be talking a little bit about it as I go along with the drawing. The thing you're going to need, because this is a pen and ink and wash, you're going to need a brush. This is the brush I'll be using. Um, get something soft. You don't want to use a bristle brush for pen and ink drawings. And I like these shorter ones because they fit my drawing kit. If you can get like a little can of Altoids like this and it's a really good place to store your other quills and there's many type but these last a long time but they sometimes start to rust. Get yourself, um, get yourself like some paper You uh, kind of wipe off your brush as you're painting and drawing. Another thing I like using is getting a bunch of these 35 millimeter film canisters because they're light, uh, they're watertight and light tight and you can put water in one and what I do is I fill one completely with water and one completely with the ink and I kind of dip it back and forth and it gives me like a different style of wash. Since I'm using my drafting table you can see I have my ink already set up and my brushes and my pens already set up. The paper, the paper you can see it's got a stain on it you can do the stain in many different types of processes. You can do, just take a brush and brush on some coffee. Most people drink coffee or tea and you can get a nice stain. And the darker that you can make it, the more layers of the stain that you'll, you'll put on. You can also use watercolor. I tend to use just coffee because it's cheaper. I did take a full sheet and I cut it in half and this is the Canaletto drawing that we're going to be copying. You can, a lot of people can reproduce a drawing like this going slowly and meticulously. You almost have to be very fluid with the drawing 
in order to get to sort of quality. It's very difficult. It's known that Canaletto used a what's called camera lucida or camera obscura, but he definitely had major drawing skills. So this is an exercise in trying to kind of reproduce his technique. So you might be asking yourself, why even do a copy of an old master? It's already been drawn. Well, the reason I do it is so I can brush up on the techniques because I really like his technique. And in a way, it's inspiration for me. It gives me ideas and drawing is a good way to kind of get more ideas and learn to see things a lot better. But the idea to copy an old master is that no better teacher than an old master. And copying an old masters has been something that people have done all, all the time, all throughout history. You know, they take artists that they really like and they learn from them. And since these artists are dead, the only way to learn from them is by studying their works. And no better way of studying it than by copying their works. The first thing is first, and we have to establish where the things are. So using your pencil, pencil is the best way of drawing something lightly. And if you pick a hard pencil, it's all the, bad, the better because a hard pencil is easier to erase later on. And all we're looking for are the shapes. And oftentimes if I'm out drawing on location, I do not use a pencil but it's always important. So here's the horizon line and there's a kind of like a boat over here and the bridge then starts here. There's like a... We're also going to be taking some measurements later on. So it might be a little bit difficult to see what I'm doing but you should be able to see some of the lines I'm putting down from here to here, it's actually a little bit lower. So the kneaded eraser, we can use it to lightly remove our mistakes. The idea is not to leave the, the pencil marks. We, we don't want the pencil marks to, to show through. So if that's the chimney here, kind of like midway is another building here. We can start adding some of uh, the detail. There's a house here. And remember, this doesn't have to be a perfect drawing. The idea is to kind of figure out his technique. Learn from Canaletto's drawing technique. And also try and find the midways <clears throat> of your of your drawing on the old masters to aid your drawing. So here is a house and you can see the difference from my original drawing. I'm starting to get the general proportion. There's other little things here, but when we start doing the pen and ink, we will see exactly where these things are gonna be. This very faint drawing is your foundation for a good pen and ink drawing. If you don't know the relationships underneath the drawing, then you're not going to have a very good, strong drawing. So my idea is that you should always work hard on getting the foundation. And I do the same thing for sculpture. And in sculpture is very important. I've seen some people that kind of rush into the details, but I don't think that's a wise thing as a sculptor or artist to rush past the, the beginning stages. So I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on this and we will start doing pen and ink. turned on the light because the light is a bit inconsistent here. Now I'm going to take my kneaded eraser because once I st start establishing my pen and ink, I don't want the 
the graphite to blend in with my with my pen strokes and my ink and eventually I'll erase it all but this is just a guiding guiding um, drawing underneath I don't think you have to worry too much about the detail you just need to worry about the major shapes the general idea of the drawing that's the more important thing to do other than that we're going to be start using the pen and ink <laughs> 